All right, so unfortunately me, I've been very busy, and so I'm only barely getting around to this fight that took place a week ago now. Um, Ryosuke Iwasa dethroning Yukinori Oguni as the IBF Super Bantamweight Champion. This was actually on the same card as um, Kosei Tanaka versus Rangsan Kayanram. Um, Iwasa versus Oguni was... This This fight is awesome, man. <laughs> I'm going to leave a link in the, in the description like I tend to, but this fight was the shit. Yeah, the, and it's kind of funny because you know, it took place the same week as uh, Saul Canelo Alvarez versus Gennady Golovkin. And this is the fight that a lot of people were expecting Golovkin and Canelo to be. This was just an all-out war between these two. Um, really surprising, too, because I expected Oguni to come out and box a lot more than he did, um, be a lot more of like a, a circling fighter, the same way that he did against uh, Jonathan Guzman, um, especially considering the fact that Iwasa was you know, somewhat of a puncher himself. Um, not unlike Guzman, albeit Guzman was a lot more of like a physical fighter, like more of a Sean Porter, as well as being a big puncher as well. But um, Oguni came out and pretty much took the fight right to Iwasa. I don't know, I, I guess these two may have sparred before, because that's kind of the sense that I got about it, where Oguni felt like he, he'd be able to kind of break Iwasa under the pressure. Um, under the pressure of you know the bright lights, the the big stage and everything, Iwasa incidentally has been knocked out before. He actually um, his two uh, losses up until now were by knockout. Um, first one against Shinsuke Yamanaka back when um, they were fighting for the domestic Japanese bantamweight title, and then the second time was against Lee Haskins actually a couple of years ago back when he was challenging Haskins for Haskins's um, IBF championship at, at the time. Um, of course, this was now at super bantamweight here against Oguni. Um, Oguni, of course, as I mentioned before, won this title off of uh, Jonathan Guzman um, in really an impressive effort, man. He, he, he pretty much summarily outboxed and uh, pretty cleanly defeated, handily defeated um, Guzman with uh, pretty much basic kind of textbook boxing skills. But here against Iwasa, he took the fight right to Iwasa, um, was landing some good right hands early on. Um, but, I mean, I guess not unlike w what happened with Chocolatito recently against uh, Suiza Ket, um, he was kind of wading headlong into a bigger puncher's uh, kind of wheelhouse. You know, Iwasa was able to kind of measure out some really nice... Iwasa is actually a southpaw. Oguni's an orthodox fighter, kind of similar to the the the, um, the mention I just made. Uh, you know, he was kind of like going, like kind of throwing himself headlong into Iwasa's power. And Iwasa definitely showed some of that power because he did manage to drop Oguni in the first round. Um, landed a couple of nice right hooks and a, and a few big uh, left uh, um, crosses, left crosses. And uh, he kind of carried that on into the second round, especially into the second round where he dropped Oguni with a clean left cross that just, it made freaking Oguni's head practically bounce off the damn canvas. I'm like amazed that he got up from such a vicious knockdown. That was a mean, mean knockdown. Um, he wound up dropping him again towards the end of the second round, you know, made it a 10-7 round uh, with another mean shot. Um, of course, that was at the end of the round, though, so he, Oguni was kind of uh, saved by the bell um, by that point. The third round was uh, once again an Iwasa round, although Oguni was landing, you know, a couple of good clean shots here and there. And, you know, the funny thing about it is, um, is Oguni was actually landing really good shots in the first round, you know, up until the, fa the point where Iwasa managed to drop him. Um, but, you know, from the second and the third, it was all Iwasa. Um, the fourth round, incidentally, uh, about a minute into it, um, the ref wound up actually taking a point away from Iwasa. I thought it was a little bit premature for him to be taking a point away from Iwasa for, I guess, holding his head down and like hitting him. You know, he's like kind of up, holding the back of his head, kind of pulling it down and uppercutting, you know, pulling his head down into his uppercuts, essentially. Um, but he wound up taking a point away uh, from Iwasa. And that seemed to kind of uh, spark the fervor in, Gu in Oguni, where he started to really come on right after that. You know, he started landing a lot of good, uh, clean right crosses um good left hooks and he started to you know to finally get his rhythm together and uh, get into a bit of a, a fight with um Iwasa he was landing a lot more than, than Iwasa was in the fourth round so I gave uh, round four to Oguni um perhaps uh, Iwasa was starting to um to, to um tire out maybe uh you know the fifth round was more uh, towards Oguni. Um, Oguni was landing a lot of clean shots, a lot of good shots. Um, finally started to really back up Iwasa. Iwasa was still landing some good hard shots of his own. Um, and by this point, uh, Oguni's face was just a mess. I mean, he was, his, both of his eyes were swollen. He had been bleeding out of his mouth for like four rounds up until this point. Um, especially, uh, I guess, like on, on like the inside of his bottom lip, he must have like bit 
down when uh, when Iwasa dropped him one of those times or hit him with one of those clean left hands because he used to, he was bleeding more and more out of uh, out of the bottom lip like the inside of it um, as each round passed and like the his top lip was even swollen as well um, and then in the sixth round. Um, Oguni was actually still having a bit of success, but Iwasa was starting to get, uh, get his foot back into the fight. And um, the, they wound up going to the, the, the doctor, and the doctor wound up stopping the fight because of the fact that Oguni was just bleeding so much out of like the inside of his bottom lip. You could see it. You know, you could see like the blood like almost like pouring out by that point. It was like almost like a cut, um, I guess, akin to what happened with uh, Vitaly Klitschko against Lennox Lewis. You know, it was that type of a cut, albeit like on the inside of your mouth. You know, like almost like if you bit down um, while you while you were chewing something or something like that. But yeah, just it looked real nasty if you if you check out the fight. Um, you know, they're they're pouring water into his mouth and stuff, and it's just a uh, bloody mess pouring up out of it, man. And that, that shit's gotta sting. You know, I, I'd imagine even right now, like a week later. Yeah, that's, that shit probably still hasn't healed. They, but he probably had to get stitches up inside of his mouth for real. Um, but you know, we have a new IBF super bantamweight champion, um, Ryosuke Wasa. Uh, to, honestly, th this fight is exactly the type of fight that deserves a rematch. That was a this was a great fucking fight. Uh, you know, I, I definitely put it up in there um, as I wouldn't say necessarily a candidate for fight of the year, but definitely an honorable mention. This this definitely deserves to. You know, I mean, have a certain placement up, uh, up in the hierarchy of um, great fights in 2017. This was a really, really solid fight between these two. Um, you know, Iwasa. I mean, Oguni came out with a head full of steam. Iwasa started dropping him, started hurting him. Um, Oguni started to come back, made a, a great comeback. It turned out to be kind of his last stand, and you know, Iwasa wound up uh, stopping him on cuts. Um, you know, and because of the premature stoppage, I mean, Oguni had been coming on up until the, the point where it was stopped. So, I mean, I could very well see um, a rematch taking place. You know, the crowd was definitely into it. Um, funny enough, um, I, I, Iwasa was actually announced second, like almost as though he was the champion. It seemed like most of the crowd was there for Iwasa. You know, it's a, he definitely had a lot more fanfare than, than Oguni did, interestingly enough. Um, so, I mean, I, I guess there, there, there was some, there, there's something that brew, there was something brewing between these two. This is the feeling I get, you know, I, I unfortunately, um, don't know Japanese. So I'm not sure if the commentators were extrapolating, you know, certain things that may have happened between these two in the past out of, uh, what, what had gone on or perhaps in the pre-fight, um, there was some trash talk maybe or something of that nature. But um, yeah, th it, this was definitely a very heated fight between these two, and you could just tell from the the crowd reaction and j the way that they were fighting. You know, you could you could definitely tell uh, just right off right from the jump. Um, so hopefully these two have a rematch. Um, otherwise, I do know that uh, Tomoki Kameda, you know, former bantamweight champion, is uh, is plugging away right there. Um, could potentially uh, fight. Uh, either of these guys uh, reasonably soon, considering his high IBF ranking. Uh, but I, I'd imagine, you know, the, this fight was so good and, you know, the domestic level uh, Japanese fighters um, fighting for a world championship. Um, you know, I, I definitely think that the, the ratings were probably pretty solid on this. I haven't necessarily checked on them. Um, but, you know, it was on the undercard of, uh, of Kosei Tanaka. And Tanaka has definitely been a, a bit of a rising star um, in, the, in the Japanese scene for sure. So, um, just uh, check this fight out. Let me got, know what you guys think. And, um, ho hey, hopefully we get a rematch, man, because this was a really, really good fight. And I think we definitely deserve one. So that's going to be all for this one. I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace.